Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X research and professional physicist. And today I'd like to bring to you another one of my articles. This one's entitled, Effect of Planet X Objects as Large as the Sun on the Earth, Energy Levels. Now, Planet X systems tell, of course, all the cores of dead stars, planets, and moons. They are dead because they are extremely depleted in gravitational photon energy, which is associated with the gravitational influence of a celestial object, i.e. its ability to generate a gravitational field, as well as its ability to create matter. All living cores from galactic nuclei cores to the cores of moons create their own outer layers of matter. Planet X cores are not able to, though. They do, however, retain some of their initial positive electric charge and thus some of their initial electric potential. Since the dying process seems to have been sudden and would have had a similar effect on all the objects, and since electric potential is proportional to the radius squared of the object, the larger objects would have a larger electric potential. The objects also interact only with matter of comparable electric potential to their own so that the largest objects of a size closer to or larger than the Sun find no material even in the Earth's core with which they can interact and will thus have no effect on, on planet Earth. These larger objects that would once have been living stars only find material that they can interact with on the Sun. And you may look at Article 566 entitled Planet X Creating Sinkholes and Effects on the Human Body for more details. And here you can see some of these objects. And this is a very large one. This one about the same size as the Sun. This one smaller. So Planet X system stellar cores larger than the Sun or of about the same size as the Sun induce matter creation events in the Sun's core. And these result in CMEs and solar flares. And this is what you see here occurring. There's one here. There's a CME going out towards the object. There's a huge CME going out towards this huge object. Now, the smaller stellar core, and you see it there in the yellow image, is only capable of interacting with the sun's corona. That's why it's just sitting there in the sun's corona, and it's interacting either with the corona itself, or it may be able to interact with the upper layer of the chromosphere. And this object, as you can see, it's much smaller than the Sun, so it's much smaller than both of these objects. So objects from about four times larger than the Earth seem to find compatible material to interact with on the Sun. Smaller objects would have to go to the planets to find compatible materials they would be able to interact with. It is likely, therefore, that objects of about the same size as the Earth, or perhaps up to twice the size of the Earth, would be able to interact with Earth's internal plasma and induce earthquakes and volcanic eruptions on Earth. And you may look at Article 501 entitled Planet X Induced Volcanic Eruptions, or like an Earth CME, for more details. And here you can see another one of these objects. You can see that circular shape there. That's a spherical object there. And it seems to be about the same size as the sun as well. And this this CME going out from the sun towards the object. It's a result of the sun going through a matter creation event. Now this indicates that in a living celestial object, the electric and gravitational potentials have matching values and the core creates and interacts only with material which must be of um, about the same energy level or one energy level below. It is also likely that an imbalance in the ratio, in other words, more gravitational potential than electric potential, triggers matter creation events. And a very large imbalance will likely trigger a core ejection, where part of the core is ejected inside a layer of newly created plasma. This also suggests how Planet X objects trigger matter creation events inside the cores of living objects such as the Sun or the Earth. And this is illustrated by this diagram. So Planet X uh, system stellar cores are severely depleted in electrons, and that's what we have there when they lost their gravitational energy 
any remaining electrons combine with protons to form neutrons. The remaining protons remain protons because there were no electrons for them to combine with. It is these remaining protons that determine the electric potential and thus their energy level. But in the plasma of a living core, there are plenty of electrons to flow toward the region closest to the approaching stellar core, which thus becomes more neutral, causing a drop in electric potential in that region. The electrons in the core are very low in gravitational energy, though. The higher energy electrons are repelled to the Earth's outer negative layer, so they're only very low gravitational energy electrons within the core. So the flow tends to decrease the electric potential, but a gra uh, greater than by a much greater amount than it is increased by the presence of the additional electrons. Because there will be additional electrons in here, they will have some gravitational energy, but it will be, because they are low, it will not be much. So that means that the electric potential drops by a much larger amount than the gravitational energy increases and therefore the gravitational potential increases, which means that an imbalance is created. Now we have too low an electric potential for the gravitational potential. Um, so that means that a matter creation event is induced. And for details about how the protons and the electrons work, you may look at book 3 entitled Planet X Reveal Gravity and Light. So when the electric potential drops below the gravitational potential, a matter creation event is induced. If the stellar core is extremely large, the drop in electric potential will be large and a core ejection may be triggered. So that's a more energetic uh, matter creation event. Then the fact that stellar cores can only interact gravitationally and electrically with matter of about the same electric potential as they have suggests that both the electric and the gravitational interactions are energy level specific. It cannot just be the gravitational interaction that is energy level specific because then objects that cannot gravitationally interact with Earth would still be able to trigger matter creation events. Thus, both interactions only occur between matter at the same energy level as determined by its electric potential and matter one level below. Therefore, the Earth's core can attract its own core plasma and the plasma which its core creates, which we will name in a mantle plasma. The inner mantle plasma can attract its own plasma and the plasma it creates, say outer mantle plasma, but it cannot attract core plasma. This means that the highest potential plasma is always on the inside in a celestial object and there is no mixing of plasma at other energy levels. Since the electric potential is determined by the number of protons within matter, it is the number of protons per unit volume which determines the energy level of the matter and what other matter it is able to interact with. Thus, the stellar cores as large as the Sun cannot interact with any matter found on Earth because their proton density is much higher than any matter found on Earth. And this illustrates the interaction that you have. So we have the core which has the highest electric potential. So it has the most protons per unit volume than all the other levels. And so the levels, um, the electric potential decreases as we move across from the core outwards. So matter within a layer has a characteristic potential which decreases outwards. Matter interacts gravitationally and electrically with other matter at its own energy level and with matter one energy level below. And we have to say with matter one energy level up because e you have to say that if you're looking at this matter, you have to say, well, it is interacting with the core and we should be able to calculate the force because it's an equal and opposite reaction according to Newton's third law. So basically it means that this layer can interact with a layer below and it can interact with a layer above. Now, since denser matter will have more positively charged particles, 
per unit volume, denser matter will have a higher electric potential and thus be at a higher energy level. And this means that density will increase as we move toward the center or core of a celestial object. So in conclusion, the largest planet X system stellar cores, those that are four times the size of the Earth or larger, cannot interact gravitationally with the Sun as their energy level, which is determined by their electric potential, which is in turn determined by their proton density, only allows them to interact with matter that is only found in the Sun. They therefore have no effect on the Earth. Gravitational potential is determined by the amount of photon energy within the particles making up each matter layer. Both electric and gravitational potential increases towards the center of a planet. The gravitational potential usually matches, at least in living celestial objects, the electric potential. However, it can also be above or below. If gravitational potential is above the electric potential, matter creation events in which gravitational energy is released and transformed into matter are triggered, and these result in volcanic eruptions or earthquakes on Earth. And these are the references. This is Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X physicist. Thank you for watching.